What is up, you beautiful boys and girls? My name is Brandon, and we're going to do another podcast on my commute home. Um, I'm back in my car. I drive a 2008 Chevy Cobalt Sport, so it is a little loud, and hopefully with uh, background noise reduction, you don't notice that, but if it's too bad, you'll never hear this in the first place. It doesn't matter. Uh, so today we're going to talk about Star Wars Episode 7, which was released December 18th or December 17th at night, um, if you want to get, you know, real specific. Um, this is probably going to be spoilery. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and say this is 100% going to contain spoilers, and I'm going to talk about my theories, what I enjoyed about the film, and things like that. So, if you have not seen Episode 7 yet... Shut this off, bookmark it, and come back to it because I've got some great theories for you guys and I think you'll enjoy them. So with that being said, I'm going to dive right in, but I lied to you because before I do that, please go to patreon.com slash alteredwalters and throw me a bone over there. I know you hear it in every video and I know that you blow it off and that's totally okay, but it would mean the world to me if you would go over there and support me and it would allow me to leave my day job and continue my college career, and my career in social media, and, um, you know, putting these out, crafting them, making my videos better, and henceforth. So, Star Wars Episode Seven: The Force Awakens, was the sequel to the original Star Wars trilogy, directed by George Lucas, but Episode Seven was directed by J.J. Abrams, after Lucas sold the uh, franchise to Disney, and, you know, the, uh, sequel was, was decided to, to be made, basically, um, so we've still got episode eight and nine, as well as two spin-off sort of movies coming out, but let's just talk about how great Star Wars was, um, I might have a review coming out, I might not, because this is kind of like a review discussion thing, so, but if I had to give it out of a ten, I would definitely give it a nine or a nine point five. There are a couple small things here and there that bothered me or I didn't um, like, you know, but, but nothing that's even worth talking about, except that there's no Ewoks, you know. Where the hell are the Ewoks? They're the best part of Star Wars. <laughs> I love Ewoks. Um, that was my only real complaint was there's no Ewoks and there should have been. But whatever. Um, it's incredible, guys. It's That's the only way you can boil it down. I'm going to get a Star Wars tattoo. Uh, next, less than a month away, actually it's like two and a half weeks away right now, I love this movie, I'm gonna see it multiple times, and it's just so great, it, it picks up, you know, in the future, and it's exactly what we need right now, it's a modern Star Wars, and it's, that's, it, it gives you everything you want and more, J.J. made an incredible film, and I couldn't be happier that the series is in his hands right now, um, Ray is what we believe to be a scavenger, and she is living on Jakku. Um, it looks to be that she was abandoned there, and basically she falls headfirst into adventures and eventually meets up with some of the cast of the original franchise. And that's a basic plot outline. Um, if you've seen the movie, you know that, though, so I'm just going to dive into some of my thoughts and all that stuff. I don't really have what all I'm going to talk about boiled down, so if this is a little tangent-filled and uh, off-topic, I apologize, but as you guys know, I'm driving, and all my podcasts are kind of off the handle and crazy. So, first things first, General Snoke, I believe is his name, but Snoke, whatever, that dude, the new emperor, it seems to be. A lot of people don't know who this is, and we have no confirmation, but there's a couple of theories floating out there. Some people think it's Emperor Palpatine. Um, some people think it is, um, oh, I can't think of the other person's name, but anyway, there are a couple people out there, um, that believe maybe it's Boba Fett, and that is the theory I hold closely to and agree with the most, and here's why. So, Boba Fett is Snoke because not only is there a movie coming out next fall, Star Wars Rogue One, which is going to talk about Boba Fett and what has happened to him, I think that is going to 
you know, explain everything that the Sarlacc pit, you know, dissolved his armor and injured him and stuff. And that's why his face looks like this. And he ended up becoming Snoke, you know, throughout this. I think we're going to find out that out throughout this film. Um, it, it, it's, there's not a whole lot of evidence other than a couple of theories on armor damage and, um, just things like that. And the timeline I think works and it especially works with the fact that this movie is a filler movie between episode seven and eight. And I just think it would be a great way for that movie to tie into the series a little bit better. But that's my, you know, that's my crazy theory and we'll see what happens there. Um, but personally I'm rooting for it to be Boba Fett. I think that will be rad. Um, another thing that people like to talk about or are talking about currently is the Kylo Ren and Rey kind of brother-sister idea. So, as we know, Kylo is Han and Leia's son. And his real name is Ben. Ben Solo, named after Obi-Wan Kenobi, whose name was Ben. Um, and he is a Jedi that turned to the dark side during his training with Luke. Which, you know, you'll have that, I guess. Um... As we do know that twins run in the Skywalker family. Leia and Luke are twins. And personally, I, like many others, believe that Rey and Ben are twins. However, without Han or Leia telling Rey that they're her parents, or her knowing that it's her parents, there, there is some confusion there. Obviously, you would think they would tell her, or she would recognize them, or any combination of the two. However, that is never done, and so we are led to believe that it's Luke's daughter, and since she does wield the Force, and she is a Jedi, she has to be a descendant of one of these people, I would assume. Um, personally, I like to think that she is Han and Leia's daughter, just because of the looks that are given throughout the film, and the fact that Ben says to her, when referring to Han, um, she says, he's like the dad you never had. And she agrees or whatever, you know. And he says, it's okay, though. She would, He would disappoint you anyway. Which is how Ben feels about Han. He feels that Han was a disappointment as a father. And that contributed to him turning to the dark side. And eventually coming to be underneath of Snoke. So, take that with a grain of salt. Think about it. Enjoy that. Digest it. And I hope to God... In episode 8, we find out who in the world Rey is and her backstory with her with her parents. Um, kind of a spinoff of that is if she is Luke's daughter, who in the world would Luke have been married to or, I guess, have a child with? Uh, I've talked to quite a few people, and none of us can figure out who in the Star Wars universe, uh, timeline-wise or, you know, just lore-wise, that Luke could have had a child with. So that's another thing that you kind of got to wonder is, well, well, if it's his daughter, you know, who in the world is, or is her mom? Because that's, that's something we don't have any answers to. But at the end of the movie, when Ray goes and meets Luke at that planet that, um, I don't know, I don't think it's referred to as anything in particular. I don't remember seeing this, but it's a very common thing that people are saying that it's there and many missed it just because it's a small detail. It looks to be that Luke is actually standing next to a tombstone or a memorial, which we can then assume is most likely his wife's, because Yoda and a couple other people that have died in the universe previously are not, um, they should, they, they wouldn't be buried on this unknown planet. So that's a theory you could draw there. And, you know, like I said, hopefully we get this backstory in episode 8, and we can figure this all out and go from there with it. Um, very excited for episode eight. Very excited to see Ray's story and, and progression of the character. I think Daisy Ridley, Ridley um, is an incredible actress, and I think that not only does she portray a great uh, scavenger and kind of confused, abandoned child and, and young adult, but she also was an incredible Jedi and kicked Kylo Ren's ass. So that's awesome. And another thing I wanted to talk to you guys about was Finn or FN2187, which is actually, 2187 is actually Princess Leia's cell number from the original Star Wars universe in Star Wars Episode One, when she is rescued by Luke and Han. That's a fun little tidbit and Easter egg, but FN2187, who becomes Finn after Poe gives him that nickname, 
um, is obviously a black gentleman, and in the Star Wars universe, sadly, there are not a lot of these types of people. Um, but it looks like we're, we're starting to break that mold in the Star Wars universe, and that's very exciting to see not only a, a powerful woman, but also people of color in the franchise. With this, Finn seems to be a Jedi. And I know what you're thinking. Ah, Finn's not a Jedi because he's a stormtrooper. Shut up. But how in the world did Finn not only wield a lightsaber, but use the lightsaber with enough, uh, you know, experience and he was able to, you know, stand his own in a fight with Kylo Ren, who is believed to be a very serious uh, Sith Lord and or... I guess, dark side, you know, baddie in this universe. How in the world did Finn not instantly get killed by him unless he is experienced with the Force or a Jedi? Which go hand in hand, I know, but obviously, like Rey, he doesn't have practice with this, so it, it, it would lead you to believe that he's a Jedi and that this is something that comes naturally. The only conclusion I can draw is that Finn is actually the son of Mace Windu. Now, I do not know if the timeline would work. I don't know if times line up. I do not know if Mace already had a son, if there's something that can be explained away, or if, in fact, uh, Finn could be Mace Windu's son, which would be awesome. And it would expand the Jedi universe even more. Um, in the trailer, when Han says it's true, all of it's true, the dark side, the Jedi, uh, when he says the Jedi, it actually is on Finn. So that leads you to believe that Jedi, or that Finn is a Jedi, and, you know, he is uh, a descendant of another Jedi in the universe. However, that could just be a trailer editing trick, and a lot of these trailers are done by third-party companies in a trailer house, um, and not always 100% directed by the, you know, people working on the film. So this could have just been a coincidence, but that's another fun one that we don't know. I would love to see an explanation as to Finn, where his parents came from, or I guess who are his parents since he was abducted from them at a young age is what the movie leads us to believe because he was turned into a stormtrooper and that's how that happens in this universe. So Finn makes Windu, that would be awesome. Finn, Finn Windu, sweet name. But, uh, We'll see with that. And I think the last kind of, well, one of the last theories I want to talk about or ideas is actually Rey's ability with a lightsaber and Rey's Jedi abilities. So as we conclude, Rey is a descendant of one of the Skywalkers. Hopefully, anyway. Um, because of this, she would be a Jedi or have Jedi abilities. Um, maybe not a full-fledged Jedi, what, you know, whatever, technicalities. Uh, but not only does she use the Force and mind tricks, she also can wield a lightsaber and do an excellent job in combat, like I stated before, when she absolutely kicks Kylo Ren's ass and scars his face like Anakin in the, uh, you know, in, in the previous films has a similar face scar. So that's a cool little tidbit, but... How in the world is she so good with the Force instantly? She's attracted to Luke's lightsaber. She uses the a very difficult mind trick on a on a stormtrooper with only her third attempt. She makes it completely successful and escapes. And I just cannot figure out how in the world she would be able to hold up with Kylo in a fight unless she is trained. Because as we know, Kylo Ren was was trained by Luke and then turned on him and you know all that fun stuff. So I think, here's a, you know, a, a big theory, uh, kind of a cloud that holds everything together. I believe that Kylo and Rey are brother and sister. Kylo went to Luke for training, as well as Rey. But when Kylo turned on him at a young age, Rey was then abducted by a third party and left on Jakku. And she had waited all of her life, it looks like, to get rescued from that. And I believe that Luke went into hiding after Kylo turned and she was abducted because he was ashamed of what happened. 
and all that stuff, and she's been waiting all this time for Luke to return to save her, save her, and or Han and Leia, Leia, woof, Han and Leia to save her from Jakku, but they were unaware of, you know, where she was located at the time. So, I just, I just feel like she can't be a Jedi, uh, that, you know, masterful of a Jedi without practice. You know, you have to hone the craft in, in the Star Wars universe. It's, it's practice, it, it, it takes some, it takes some ability, you know, other than just being born with it. That's why, you know, that's why Kylo was being, or Ben, was being trained by Luke in the first place to be, you know, a grade A Jedi. But, without getting too tangential or, you know, off the beaten path. I just want to go ahead and continue with my praise of the Star Wars film. Uh, all of them, but episode seven in general by J.J. Abrams was a masterpiece and a, you know, a masterclass in the art of sci-fi filmmaking and picking up a franchise years later and kind of rebirthing it for a younger generation. At my age, I never got to see the original trilogy in theaters, and really didn't even see them into my t up until my teen years. Um, when I met my wife, was actually the first time I really sat down and watched four, five, and six, and loved them and enjoyed them. And so, by rebooting this series, you're really allowing the universe to expand and draw on a whole other generation of fans. And I just think that's awesome. So, shout out to Disney for doing this, allowing this, and J.J. Abrams for directing this masterpiece. So that's awesome. Side note, BB-8 is the best character I've seen in a movie in years. Like I said, I'm getting a Star Wars tattoo. Well, my Star Wars tattoo is actually of BB-8. Uh, I have it scheduled for, like I said, a couple weeks from now, and I'm getting a BB-8 tattoo on my body because he's the best damn droid that there ever was. And I say that with complete confidence and love for little BB-8 is what I like to call him. You know, B-A-E, like Bay, like the fucking internet slang term. I think it's funny. Whatever. So, BB-8 is incredible. He's like a new R2, but then him and R2 have a relationship in the movie, and he just fits in with C-3PO and R2 so well, and it's just like, it's a beautiful little droid family, and I love it so much. It's, it's, it's so great. I could continue to ramble on and talk about how great this movie is, and some other theories, and, and all that stuff, but I just want to go ahead and wrap this up for you guys, because I think that if you've seen the Star Wars movie, and you're listening to this podcast to uh, think about some other things related to the movie, then you're probably wanting to go see it again, so I challenge you to finish this podcast out, if it's on you, if you're watching this on YouTube, leave me a comment, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe, check out Patreon, all that fun stuff, and then go see Star Wars again. Go find a theater around you that's maybe not, you know, the the expensive, nice AMC, Cinemark, rave cinemas. You know, one of those nice theaters. But find a local local movie theater. You know, support a small business. The tickets are cheaper. And why don't you go see Star Wars again? Come back to this. Leave me some more comments. Give me some topics, some ideas to talk about. And we'll just continue the cycle. So, in the time being, guys, may the Force be with you. And I'll see you again very, very soon. Goodbye.